这就是。Hello. Oh. <laughs> It's filming time. I know. Okay. <laughs> so our first four or five years in this hobby, we would always spend, I think, anywhere between one and four hours per target. Uh, usually we do like one hour on clusters and three to four hours on galaxies and nebulae. And we were very happy with that. Uh, except for the driving part, but you know. Yeah. That was not so chill. <laughs> So we really didn't have a choice back then. We only, we had an apartment, no backyard, and we had to drive really, really far away. So Every again, time. not so chill. So now it's a little bit different. Yeah, when, when we finally got a house uh, with a backyard, uh, we completely fell in love with taking our time. And we now enjoy spending more time on each target. So it started with like 20 hours on the Pelican Nebula to 37 hours on the Cave Nebula to 40 hours on the Seda region to my personal favorite, 61 hours on the Seagull Nebula and Thor's Helmet. Incredible, impeccable. And honestly, there really isn't a point of spending that much time on deep sky objects. Like sure, the noise gets washed out more and more, your image is cleaner. And after 50 hours, the gain is not really worth the trouble. That's very true. So you can spend like thousands of hours, uh, there's not really much of a point after a while. So in this video, we're going to quickly show you our results on a nebula we captured non-stop for the past few months. We spent a total of 130 hours on it, and it is divided into three different pictures. Can you believe? Because yes, you heard what I said. It's not worth spending that much time on a single image. We thought it would be more fun and much more exciting to show you three versions of this target. Once with a DSLR lens, once with a beginner refractor from home, and one taken from Bortle 2 skies with our remote telescope. And all together, it adds up to 130 hours. Pretty crazy. Oh, so yeah. the chosen target was... NGC 2264. So it includes... The Christmas tree cluster. The Cone Nebula. The Fox Fur Nebula. And the Stellar Snowflake Cluster. And all in all, it, remem it resembles a, a space Christmas tree yeah. made up of a bunch of hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, sulfur two, and it's super duper large and so like an explosion of colors. It's, it's amazing. And, and it's, how far is it? It's 2,500 light years away in the constellation of Monoceros. So the first project was uh, with our beginner telescope from the backyard and I was 33 hours of integration time. Yes, so this project was the true color image, and that was done from our Bortle 9 backyard, which is, again, so gross. We live in Las Vegas, if you didn't remember. Um, and it all started from the idea of making a, like a fun Christmas-themed video, if you guys remember that, and using the Christmas tree cluster as the target. So that video was super duper fun to do, and hopefully you watched it, because it was Astro and also Christmas at the same time. And so we spent a total of 33 hours on this image with our ASCAR FRA 500 and full frame camera, and we were able to get this. So it shows the true color of the hydrogen alpha, which is red, which mm -hmm. overwhelms completely the entire nebula. The processing was not easy because we were shooting from the city using a dual band filter. It was a full frame camera at f3.9, and there are some stars issue that need to be taken care of. And we had some vignetting issues as well, um, but in the end, the image looks great. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Now we had a second fun video idea, which was imaging the nebula with a DSLR lens and a cooled astro camera. At first we weren't really gonna pick the Christmas tree again, but then we're like, mm, there's not really much going on right now. So not a slim pickings, you know? So here comes project number two. Yeah, because the Christmas tree area of the sky is the last, I think the last nebulous area in the whole sky to kind of set um, in the horizon at this time of the year. So that's why we had to pick this one. So we have to have as much time as possible on it. Isn't it just insane that the Christmas tree is up around Christmas time? Who planned that? Yeah. Who planned know. that? It's very really strange. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> do, 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 do. So the second project was 16 hours of uh, integration time with this time a DSLR lens. So it was now time to spend yet another series of nights shooting this nebula, but this time in a much wider field of view. So the point here was to include so much more uh, of those guys that you saw in the first image. And you can see these were cut off because despite using a full frame camera and a small telescope, 
The nebulosity around the object is massive in size. It's a lot. Yeah. So we decided to use the wide field view of this lens, the Rokinon 135mm f2, and to also include the Rosette Nebula in the same frame. And this was once again shot from home using a dual band filter, and the camera used was the ASI 2600MC, and once again it totals 16 hours. So I do love this image. I think it's super duper impressive to see just the size of these famous nebulae and the fact that they're so close together yet so far. How romantic. Okay, so it's time to get to the biggest project of all, Mr. Number Three. Project number three. 81 hours of integration time using a remote setup. Yeah. So it's time to start from scratch uh, and yet again, image the Christmas tree from nothing. So. We decided to do this because we wanted to show the object both in true color, like we just did twice, mm -hmm. and now in narrow band instead, so hobo style. And it's... And it's now our new integration time record, beating our 61 hour uh, long image of the Seagull and Thor Nebula from last time. And it's so pretty! So as of right now, it's our longest integration ever. Yeah, it's our personal record-breaking best, so I think that that's very exciting. So in astrophotography, the total integration time is really important because the signal to noise ratio gets better the more time that you spend on target. So up to a point, like we said, the goal of spending so much time on this specific target was to reveal as much faint gas as possible and to completely eliminate all the visible noise from the data and to get the cleanest, crispest possible image possible. And it worked because the, the image is so clean. It's super, super she clean. Is there's so no noise. She's so crispy. Like... There's like no noise at all. It's crazy. You can zoom all you want. There's no noise. I it's love amazing. that. amazing. So we used our SVX-130 and QHY-600M from Utah Desert Remote Observatories and under a bottle two sky. So we spent so much time on this target that we had to continue while we were on vacation in France, because we went to France for the summer. We weren't even here. No, we went to France for the winter uh, vacation and we had to continue while there. So we've been in France uh, visiting family for almost two months now, and we still uh, are able to image uh, remotely, which is a first for us, and it's pretty incredible because uh, we're, you know, we're able to get data even from very far away. Sorry. That. Even from very far away from uh, the telescope. So here uh, we have so much stuff already shot. It's a bit difficult because of the time difference, um, but you know, using Nino, it's it's fine to put a delay and all that. So um, cool stuff and exciting. And we were so so glad that we had this telescope available uh, remotely, um, which we did like a few months ago. It was just perfect timing. Yeah, we could not travel with all the gear that we use right now. It's just impossible. So, yes, we slewed to the Christmas tree every single clear night that we could to gather as much data as we could as possible. And so we stacked all of that in one single image when we were back in the US, and the total number of individual files that we had to calibrate and combine, which includes all the light and calibration frames... Just to give a big number, you know. <laughs> ...was 533. So it took the computer a full night to finish the yeah, calibration and stacking, which is really so crazy. And it makes me think we might need a new computer. So we used six filters for this image, um, S, H, and O for the gas, and R, G, and B for the stars. And here you can see what the data looked like through each narrowband filter. It was fun to process, but difficult to manage this crazy mix of colors and bringing out all of these details everywhere. Truly. The crazy thing um, with this image is that it's, the noise is just basically non-existent. Uh, I don't see any noise, it's so beautiful. You can just zoom all you want and you will never see any issue with that and it's all crisp, clean and impressive. Yes, and that's probably as good as it gets for Astro. Yeah. And overall this image turned out incredible, like chef's kiss. It's definitely one of, if not the most cleanest images that we've yes. ever produced. And so the point of this video was to just compare three unique versions of the same target, shot differently but in depth. And also, which one is your favorite? I think the safe option is to pick one of the two uh, true color versions, but um, I think some people will either completely love or completely dislike maybe the narrowband one uh, because it's so full of colors. We'd love to know which one is your favorite by curiosity. 
And we do have a full blog post about how we captured all of these pictures on our website. So be sure to check that out. And we also have a full processing guide available for you in the description below if you want to learn how to process your own images exactly the way that we do it. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a website full of engaging lessons about different topics. As astronomy lovers, we know that many of you likely have an interest in all types of sciences, including even math. I mean, so you can go to brilliant.org and pick out whatever topic you want to learn about. You'll be met with really easy to follow content, beautiful lesson designs, and interactive learning. We specifically enjoy all the lessons related to astronomy. And it's actually been helping to learn a lot from it just by spending a few minutes a day on the website. There is new content added monthly, which is always interesting to discover. Some of the lessons in Brilliant actually have a direct link with some advanced sections of astrophotography, which is really cool. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days free, visit the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.